Are you better off than you were four years ago? Well, according to a new poll from The Hill, 52% of voters say the country is worse off. 54% say President Obama does not deserve re-election based on his job performance. Not what Democrats want to see as their convention kicks off. Joining me now to weigh in is Lou Dobbs. I mean, these numbers were pretty staggering across the board when you lay, whether they were looking at male, female, age group, overwhelmingly saying that the country is worse off and that they don't think President Obama deserves re-election. And these numbers were closer, Melissa, than most polls show it. That is, a greater number of people disaffected with the direction of this economy, disaffected with the, this president's economic policies. Uh, those numbers are considerably higher in other polls, reaching up to about, uh, to the point that only 40 percent want to think that this president, it's quite a different state. 40% say he deserves re-election uh, in that broader range of polls, which isn't the same thing as saying, you know, I'm not going to vote for him. Yeah. Uh, but right. who could argue? No one here, uh, I think, uh, is under any illusion uh, that it's going to be easy for either one of these men to lead us through the next four years, through this troubled economy, through a period in which we're going to have to make very difficult public policy decisions. Uh, and I, th I think that's being reflected. But it's quite a different thing than saying, do you deserve it? I think the answer is easily hell no. Uh, but it's a choice between two men and competing visions and uh, their respective political aspirations. Yeah, and the stats are devastating. And some like to quibble about the time period, you know, whether mm -hmm. we're talking about the beginning of this administration or, or whether former President Bush is to blame for part of this. But when you look at things like I thought the most devastating was what the Federal Reserve said when they talked about, you know, the average family's net worth dropping by about 40 percent from one hundred and twenty six thousand four hundred dollars in 2007 to seventy seven thousand mm -hmm. three hundred in 2010. But the question becomes, can Mitt Romney do better? I mean, that's what people are. Yeah, really asking, would I and that's going to yeah. be the issue, I think, for most Americans who are voting, and that's why we're seeing a dead heat right now. Uh, this is really quite something. I know that President Obama and his folks don't like to look at it this way, but the reality is for any incumbent president to be in a dead heat with a challenger who is, after all, the man they repeatedly said, the political advisors to this president repeatedly said, his campaign repeatedly said, give us Romney. They've got Romney. And here is the man standing there with his wife, his five children, his 18 grandchildren, uh, a man of, of immense professional accomplishment, a man with you know, a, an impeccable, uh, impeccable life in terms of what he's done for his community, uh, for his charities, uh, his church. Uh, he's running against the, uh, the, you know, a fellow who is the, uh, the poster uh, picture of what every every man in this country would aspire to be unless you know they well i would say most men would aspire to be uh, seemingly perfect in his in his personal life uh perfect in his business life i mean there is i just don't see how people find fault with this fellow well speaking of trying to find fault mm -hmm. so the dnc is going to bring out some folks from bain capital mm -hmm. on yeah. the stage to I guess, you know, refute Mitt Romney's record or to say that what they are doing... They're going to try to destroy is, him, yeah. or as the campaign Does that work? put it. I don't think so, not at all, because the more pictures you see of Ann Romney, uh, the more pictures you see of the family friends that uh, this man has uh, committed himself to in, in, in supporting them, helping them, uh, including financially. Uh, this is a man who stands as a model. Uh, to the point that there are those, some in this society, <clears throat> excuse me, there are some in this society who will be so turned off by that because it is so, I mean, they are so ca countercultural, pretending to a political philosophy. They're countercultural. They're trying to deny everything that this country has been while he is a demonstration of everything it can be. Interesting. All right, Lou Dobbs, thank you so much. Of course, we see you here at this time. Every, every single day, day. Right at this time. And it never gets tiring, does it? Not for me, it, it is does, exciting not for, for all me. of us. And I also watch you at 7 and 10 p.m. Eastern. Oh, you I'm so grateful. Thank you. are going to kick off the big convention we tonight, right? We are going to right? do that. By the way, without us, it wouldn't happen. No, I have no doubt about that. You have the author of Fool Me Twice. That's Aaron Klein. Uh -huh. And we're going to talk about, imagine this, a second term for President Obama. Interesting. All right, Lou Dobbs, thanks so much. Thank you.